Welcome everyone. Um, good morning and uh, good afternoon and good evening to everyone who uh, took the time to join this um, webinar today. I'm Giuseppe Basile, I'll be your host. Uh, and I'm also known as the FIPS Talker, as you probably know. Um, this this webinar is going to be very high, and I, um, I'm, I'm sure you will learn a lot and will be fun as well as we are going to play a money management game. So, as it's very packed, I would actually dive in. I want to thank Adinda and uh, Vicky uh, at FX Street for um, organizing uh, uh, the um, the uh, the event and the webinar here. Um, so welcome everyone. Welcome Pantelis. Uh, see there is Peter as well there. Okay, so let's dive into it. The agenda is going to be very very packed. Uh, let me let me share with you uh, my uh, blog here because on the blog you're going to find this Excel uh, that we're going to use in our money management game. So there'll be an introduction. I'll uh, briefly touch on position sizing risk management. I will introduce trading system statistics. Very, very important. If you don't, um, if you don't understand your system, there's no way you're going to be successful in uh, in trading. Let me be very, very direct and blunt about it. We will play our money management game. You'll have a lot of fun with that, and then we'll discuss how to double, triple, and uh, multiply by ten our account and what we have to do in order to do that. And then, if we have time, I'll um, I'll also formally discuss the money management. Uh, linkage with trading objectives. Uh, I have uh, uh, my May a promotion for the FIPS Talker Master's Coaching Program, and there is uh, an offer on FX Street that ends May the 29th, and I'll uh, talk about this at the end of this webinar. So let's get into it. Risk is uh, number one, is job number one, risk management of a trader, uh, past performance is not indicative of, of future results. And when I, I used to say, I mean, I like to say when the money is gone, uh, the game is over. So if you are watching this webinar, the recording of this web webinar, stop it here and read uh, this uh, the disclaimer carefully. Uh, I won't uh, talk about myself. I'll just say that I'm certified um, market technician with uh, IFTA, International Federation of Tech Analysts. I wrote three uh, papers, and there is a fourth paper that is on the way. It will be published uh, in July. Starting in 2001, had a few mentors. I have over 18,000 uh, hours of total market exposure, and I've launched FIPSTalkerTrading.com in 2014. I also have a blog, and again, uh, look at the, the last post in, in the blog because we are going to find uh, the Excel sheet that we're going to use for the game, download it now. So uh, position sizing, I'll be very quick and probably you know a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of it uh, already, but let me talk about it as a, a technique that you can overimpose on your trading method. So it's totally independent from the trading method. And I'll show you this uh, later on in detail why it's that. It answered the question how much, how much you have to size your position, how much, how many lots you have to buy, how many uh, mini lots you have to buy when, uh, when it comes to Forex trading in case of stocks, how many, uh, how many shares, in case of futures, how many contracts, and so on. It's also known as money management. Okay, there is an expert. Van Tarp is an expert of position sizing. Has has been one of my um, uh, one of my mentors as well. Why this is important? It's related to risk management, of course. How much you are risking on the trade is di directly related to the size of your position, and of course there is a direct relation to trading performance, the returns that you get at the end of the period. <laughs> But there is also a relation to trading objectives, and that's something that it's not known to the majority. Uh, so uh, what, what I'm saying here is that money manage, the money management technique that you overimpose on your trading method can influence your trading objectives, not your trading performance or trading objectives. Okay, So this is very, very important. I'm going to show you a number of examples, and you'll show it to yourself during the game that we're going to play today. So... Uh, stay tuned. So, what's the role of money management in the bigger picture? You have, you know very well this Pacman here, uh, and um, what you have here in green is uh, the trading method, and um, and in red is money management, 
which is what we're going to focus on today. And the biggest, the real Pac-Man here is the psychology. So the psychology somehow fits on these other two components. You have to have these two components in place for the Pac-Man to eat them and feed on them so you can get actually the results. Now, what happens is that, um, you know, the, the, the money, the training method gets the biggest, the bigger focus. And of course, the psychology is the most important thing, but it's also the most difficult to work on. And there is a part which is money management, which is not completely understood. And in fact, I've, uh, I've, um, you know, uh, made a point uh, in my uh, financial um, uh, career, career in finance to bring this to, uh, you know, the majority of people and demonstrate also the link between money management and training objectives. So, so if you want to learn more about money management, uh, by no means review the, um, in 2014, there are two of them, how to reach trading objectives with money management and advanced risk management for success in modern markets. They are open um, um, webinars on FX Street and you can review them, okay? Very, very important. Very quickly on risk management. It's a way to protect your precious capital. I have a rule. I call it uh, rule number one, PPC, protect precious capital. And, uh, you know, if you don't protect your capital, uh, the game is over eventually. A way to exit the market when you are wrong, and we know that the market can do anything, so you never make any assumptions on uh, what for sure the market will do in the future because the market can actually prove you wrong, and it does it often. A way to stick around until you learn the trading game. It's a game with rules. You have to learn it. You have to understand how um, what are the best ways to uh, to uh, to generate uh, setups that have a high reliability high uh, probability to uh, get price to target and if price does not get to target is a high probability of scratching the trade possibly a break even or a cost of trading so we'll see something about it later on so how i practice risk match first of all you have to accept risk look at the downside first look left if you are um, a pedestrian in uh, in London, UK, or in Australia, because if you only look at the gains side of things, you might end up getting a position uh, for which you do not realize you're, you're, you're getting a risk too high that you do not accept. And that happens very, very often. It happens to me a lot in the past. I only risk 1% or less, and I'll show you that even with this risk, you can have uh, beautiful returns, incredible returns. Only trade after price confirmation, and I also adopt a free risk trade approach that I'm going to show you in a moment. So... So fix, the fixed fraction uh, is the percentage risk. Uh, you have to accept risk. I use a confirmation timing to further reduce risk. Uh, I want only to take uh, low risk opportunities and employ a free risk approach. So let me show you what I mean here, mean here very, very quickly. And uh, those who follow me probably know a little bit the way I look at the market. I only look at grounded behavior in the market, and one grounded behavior is definitely the existence of trends, and it can be proven uh, um, formally as well. And if you review one of those two webinars I gave before, uh, I'll give you a proof there. Now, I look at trends, and I want to look at, uh, for example, in this case, CD, a retracement into E, and I look at area of potential participation of algorithms. When I identify those areas, what I do, I focus on the smaller counter trend uh, time frame here, and I look at and study the sequence of measure move. If that sequence fails, when, um, when after the market has tested that level of participation and breaks a confirmation level, that's where I want to get involved. Now, this is very interesting because it gives us, and let me, let me, um, Zoom a little bit here. Um, and by the way, if you have any questions, please write them down uh, in the chat and I'll, I'm going to answer them. So the main idea is that uh, you can uh, manage risk in a number of ways. As I mentioned, 1% or less. Uh, and the interesting thing is that when, you're, when you study the sequence of measure moves of the counter trend here, 
and the price goes above this confirmation level, it very often gets to, very, very, very often gets to even in a higher level, whereas the size between your entry and this level equals the size of these levels and the stop, which means that very, very often when you trade this area of potential participation, the low is in after the market breaks the level of confirmation. Okay, so I hope, uh, I mean, this is very quick. I don't want to talk about um, uh, the matter today. The matter today, I want to focus on money management and have you play the money management manage game and you realize a few important things. So you cannot be successful in trading if you do not understand the statistics of your trading system. This is very, very important. So there are only a few things that you have to know, but you have to know them well. And these things are actually the um, reliability, which is the number of winners, the percentage of winners, the expectancy, which is the dollar earned for every dollar risked. And this is expectancy is probably the most complex thing, but I'll put that in for you in, in very simple terms and um, and I'll show you its meaning, which is very, very simple in the end. The number of opportunities, of course, that I have in the period, and the period could be a week, a month, could be a, a year. This is the number of proper setups that our trading system provides to us. And expectunity is just the expectancy times the number of opportunities. So that basically gives us the number of the dollars earned for every dollar risk in the period, because we consider now all the opportunity you have in the period. So a system that wins a lot has a high reliability, not necessarily is a good system if it does not uh, have, show a positive expectancy. And, and even a small expectancy is not good for a system. It's not something we can rely on to double our account if, if that's your objective. And of course, we need frequent opportunities whenever we can get them. So let me show you a sample trading system here. This is the system we are going to use also for the simulation. So get ready, download again. The, um, if you have not done that just yet, download the Excel sheet you're going to find on um, the post on fibstalker.com, my last post and get ready with that, download it now. 45% of winners versus 55% of losers. And this is the way uh, this uh, trading system is characterized. So as you can see, 10% here is the percentage and uh, we have 10% probability here of doing five times our unit of risk. R, it's always my unit of risk, okay? That can be 1%, can be 2%, can be less can be a dollar amount as well. So what, we, what we're saying here is that we do 10% of the case. Um, so uh, uh, that's the link that uh, probably um, uh, Adinda gave, uh, gave out there. So um, let's, uh, let's look at that later on. I'll give you, I'll give you the, uh, the link at the end. Uh, of the presentation, but you find that link also in um, at the bottom of the webinar. So remember that uh, the webinar on FX Street, that same link is at the bottom of the webinar. Uh, anyway, we'll talk about this later on. So 10% uh, of the case, I get five times risk, 30% of the case, 3.5 times risk, 5% of the case, I get one time risk. And then I can lose as well, right? So in 50% of the case, I just scratched uh, the trade here. 0 0.2 uh, unit of risk means that I'm paying here the cost of trading, which could be, uh, uh, you know, um, a slippage, it could be uh, actually um, the spread and so on. 30% of the cases I lose my unit of risk plus cost of trading and then, this is very important, 10% of the case I can make a mistake or my order is not filled and I lose five times my risk. Okay, and you have always to consider that. So let's look at the formula for the expectancy. It's very, very simple. I multiply my percentage by the um, uh, by the unit of risk that I make in the winning trades, then I subtract uh, the, um, um, uh, sorry, I multiply each probability for the unit of risk I make, and then I sum them, and then I subtract each, uh, the multiplication of each probability for 
the uh, the losses I can have. And a lot of people get this formula wrong because what they do, they put just one unit of risk uh, below here. But this is not reflective of this is not reflective of the reality. Because first of all, you know, if you know to be to be to a better estimate would actually use one point two. Uh, which is, uh, you know, my unit of risk plus the cost of trading. I have a question here. What does it mean green is um, I win five units of risk? Well, um, it means that if I, if I risk 1%, right, and I win five units of risk, I make 5%. Okay, very, very simple. And, and this, this table here, it's telling me how my trading system will perform. So, 10% of the time, my trading system will give me five units of risk. Okay, I hope this clarifies. So going back to the expectancy here, a better calculation would be 1.2. But hey, wait a moment. We also have 10% of the cases here, a big loss. And how do we factor that in? Well, the way I factor that in is that I add, you know, to this 1.2, I add 10% of uh, five, and this gives me a 1.7 uh, that goes below here. And a lot of people get the formula of the expectancy wrong. I speak about this formula also in those two webinars that I presented before. So to me, if we use one one error, we get an expectancy of 0.71, which means that for each dollar I risk. I make in average on all the trades, also the loser, I make in average 71 cents. But if we use the other two calculations, you can see here the expectancy goes down 0.59. And I'm going to use the most realistic one. Those who know me know that I'm very conservative and I only want to deal with reality. I don't want to deal with, you know, fake calculation that show uh, that things are better uh, than they are. They're not, okay? So this is the explanation of expectancy. It might look uh, complicated, but if you play with numbers, you realize how simple is that. So let's get into it then. Uh, you'll be the boss. You'll be the fund manager and decide on risk at each trade. So I, I hope you're going to enjoy this. And I think this, this exercise is very informative and, and a lot of fun. So give me a yes if you are able to uh, to download that uh, Excel sheet from uh, my uh, from my blog. Uh, that's what you're going to use in uh, in this exercise. Uh, okay, so you'll be the boss and you will decide on the risk on each trade. You will start with 100,000 uh, uh, in your paper account. And before I will draw the trade outcome, so we will simulate 10 trades here, you will need to decide on the dollar uh, or percentage amount of your unit of risk, how much you're going to risk, okay? And you can change your bet, your percentage of risk at every trade. And as I mentioned, we'll simulate 10 consecutive trades. So for example, if your unit of risk is 5%, it's five, and you have 100,000 in your account, your dollar risk is going to be 5,000, okay? So you just put five, and I'll show you where um, uh, in the Excel sheet. Now, if your tr the trading system generates a minus five R trade, you have to record the loss of 25K. So you have to be honest, don't cheat. This is a game. If you cheat, you're cheating yourself and it's not good and it does not help. So prepare for the money management game. Open the Excel document that you can find at fibstalker.com. And you're going to find something like this. There's an example here, which is exactly what I've just mentioned. You put five, five here, if you percent, and, and then when I give you the trade outcome, you'll put the number here, and the Excel sheet will make the calculation for you. So now that we start, you can actually clean and remove this uh, from the Excel sheet that you just downloaded, okay? Give me a yes if this is clear. If you have any questions, write them down before we start. Okay. So it should be quite straightforward, actually. Okay. So 
uh, are you ready then? Give me a yes if you are ready. And if you don't want to play, that's okay. I mean, I'll strategies that I'll show you, I'll simulate as we go with the game. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun and uh, it helps. So you can play the game as well. So before we start, decide on your money match strategy. What that means? Well, you have to decide on what's your objective. Do you want to be very aggressive and try to maximize your account? Do you want to be defensive and make sure that you don't lose money? What's your objective? Decide an objective. The objective can be simple, can be very, very complex. But it's very important that you understand that a money manager can help you reaching your objectives. So don't write it down. Uh, decide how much you're going to risk. Don't write your strategy in the chat. Please don't do that. Don't write it in the chat. Everyone is going to decide by the, for themselves. Okay. So is your risk going to be a fixed risk or variable risk? Are you going to change the risk uh, before every trade or are you going to keep a fixed risk? What's your, uh, what's your strategy? This is part of your money management strategy. And based on what you will, uh, based on what you will you change your risk? Uh, do you have a strategy for changing your risk as well? Okay. So are you ready now? I'm going to start now and, uh, Last chance to download the Excel sheet and uh, and play um, together. It's very simple and we can play together. I will have three strategies and I will show the results at the end of the trading simulation. Okay, so let's start now. Trade number one, decide your risk. Are you ready? Decide your risk, don't cheat. Decide how much, how, um, what's the amount, the percentage that you want to risk. Okay, are you ready? This is what you're going to get. Decide on your risk. Okay, so you have to put 3.5 um, in the uh, in the Excel sheet there, and you're going to put 3.5 now here in the trade outcome. Okay, so uh, the system has given you 3.5 unit of risk. Add plus 3.5 here. Okay, and now go back and decide again what's your next percentage of risk. I'll only show this to you now. Okay, so you're very you are very lucky or well, you were executing your trading system and um, this trade gave you a 3.5 unit of risk. Okay, next, trade number two. Are you ready? Uh, decide on your risk. Put that number in the Excel sheet. Don't cheat. This is what you get. Okay, plus one uh, unit of risk. Okay, is the um, give me a yes if this is clear uh, what we are trying to do here. We are simulating trades. And we see two trades already, and uh, you can uh, you can actually uh, keep trading here. So the sudden your risk on the third trade, and this is what you get. You get a minus 0.2 unit of risk. This is a scratched trade. So you're only paying cost of trading here, which is uh, spread in Forex. If you are trading other uh, asset classes, could be the cost of uh, uh, the transaction cost. Uh, there could be slippage as well. So <clears throat> that's what you have to uh, re record here. So let's go on. Are you ready? I mean, decide on your risk on the fourth trade. And this is what you get, plus 3.5 R. And I'm simulating here again, I'm simulating trades from that trading system that I uh, mentioned before. Okay, what is this trading system? It's actually this trading system here. So basically, if I wanted to simulate that, I should take this uh, system, generate the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, um, the distribution of the system, and then from this, uh, the distribution of the system, uh, from the population that is actually modeled by this uh, distribution, uh, I would actually be drawing uh, this trade. And that's exactly what we are doing here. I didn't show you the distribution. I didn't show you all the uh, mathematical and statistical details be, uh, be, uh, behind this, but that's exactly what we are doing. Okay, so we are extracting trades from the population which is modeled by the distribution uh, of trades that is modeled by that trading system I gave you before. So number four, we got a 3.5 error. Number five, are you ready? Decide on your risk, 
and this is what you get. Oh my! Oh, that was that was uh, that was uh, a big hit here. Minus five. Uh, you made a mistake. Your order was not filled. Something happened there. So um, you know you have to live with this. So I hope your risk was not too high. And be don't shit. Uh, you know, uh, just leave uh, the risk that you that you have there. Put the minus five into the column and let's get on. Number six, are you ready? Decide on your risk. This is what you get. You get minus 1.2 R. Uh, this is a, a full stop loss here in your trade. Okay. And uh, don't shit. Uh, just keep doing it. Again, try trade number seven. Decide on your risk. Minus 0.2 R. This is a scratched trade. And, uh, and again, number eight, Prepare, decide on your risk, and you get a plus 3.5 R, okay, which is not too bad. And uh, second last trade here, prepare, to put your number in the risk uh, column there, and this is what you get. At a plus one R. Uh, a one unit of risk in gain. And last trade here is going to be a ready, decide on your risk. And this is what you get. You get minus 1.2, a full stop loss here. Okay? Very good. Thanks for playing. Um, uh, you can patch yourself. And But before you do that, please write down very briefly what was the strategy that you have followed. Write it down in the chat. And write down also the final amount. Don't be, you know, don't be afraid of it. Even if you lost money, it's paper money. It's good. Please write it down. Write down how much you made at the end of the period. Let me sh let me see let me see some uh, some uh, dollar amounts here. Go and tell us, Peter uh, Raymond. I saw you participate. Write it down. Don't be shy. Not a problem. Don't be shy. Go ahead. Write it down. If you don't have, because you didn't trust me and you didn't play this game, uh, you can always um, uh, replay this in the future and be ready with your Excel sheet and play with that. But anyway, if you have not lost money, pat yourself in the back and do the same. Pat yourself in the back, even if you have lost money. So MRC has an $81,623 at the end. So 2% um, risk on each one, Raymond, 108, 395.80. That's very good. Go ahead, guys, write it down. Thanks for sharing, MRC. Thanks for sharing, Raymond. Uh, anyone else has, uh, has uh, numbers there? That's very good, MRC. That's, uh, that's a good result. Uh, and we will, uh, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I have one of the strategies that did the same. And, uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you maybe why you had that result. But that's a very, very good uh, uh, thing that, uh, that you had uh, a losing uh, amount there. So as you can see, even, even from these two examples, 81,000 and 108,000, we can see that we have Pantelis with uh, three, um, uh, 3,070, so it's 103, 700 US dollars here with 1% uh, till the fifth and then 1.2, the, re the rest, uh, the, the remaining fives. All right, so as you can see, we have, we start seeing different uh, type of results. Why is that? Because each and every of you has used a different uh, money margin strategy and as a result it had it has affected the trading objectives in fact probably mrc had a positive uh, outcome and he got 81 thousands and uh, raymond and pantelis they had uh, of course strategy of making money and they used different money management techniques uh, raymond had a two percent risk fixed and pantelis has a one percent first and then he changed it slightly and increased it. So guys, uh, kudos to you. Very well done. And uh, uh, let me, let, let's, let's delve into it now. Let's try to understand uh, what we just did and what's the takeaway. Whatever the strategy you selected and your decision, 
you have witnessed how money management allows reaching or preventing you from reaching trading objectives. Uh, MRC, I'm sorry about that, but uh, you know, uh, you just supported, uh, your results just supported this, um, this view, which is very good actually, pat yourself on the back. And, and so, <laughs> thumbs up, that's uh, the, our Chinese trader here agrees on that. That's the, main, uh, that's the main takeaway here, well done. Now, let's look at some of the results. I had the strategy number one, boring is good. I raised 1%. For each trade, and I've got 104,000 uh, uh, 104, CF163. Notice how this number here is very, very close to the, our point 42 expectancy. Can you see that? Why? Because we took 10 trades, right? When we multiply by point 42, we would get... Uh, and risk 1%, we will get 4.2%, and this is 4.46%. So, so this is a proof also that the, uh, the, the trade outcomes that I have drawn from the, from the, from the uh, statistical distribution that models that trading system are actually aligned with that uh, distribution. In fact, we get a result which is very, very close to the expectancy here, okay? So, boring is good. Um, you know, a defensive strategy that is a fixed fraction of 1% never went underwater and gave results that are close to expectancy. Of course, it never went under, underwater because this minus, minus 5% only happened after a while here. It happened after four trades. If this was here, these results would have been different, but maybe we would have... Uh, uh, we would have had more because can you see here that the risk it's higher when uh, when we are here if it was at the very beginning the risk was just five thousands so we would get underwater five thousands but then we would have probably recovered and done even more what well, this shows that the results that we get from our trading system are so-called path dependent they depend on the way uh, these results show up, okay? I, I, I read here I had the minus 5 up, maybe that is why I lost. Um, yeah, probably that's the reason. And that's a good point, MRC, because I'm going to show you strategy 3 here. I did something similar to what you did. Now, strategy number 2 I had, risk is only uh, risk. I risked 5% all times. And you have to risk high only if the expectancy is very good. Now, in this case, we only have 0.42 expectancy, so the expectancy was not really very good. So when you hit a mistake or stop, or you are not filled, you can have large drawdowns. And look at what happened here. Oh, my. I don't, I don't want to see this in my trading system. I want to try to avoid to go from 143,000s to 107,000s. This is, from a psychological point of view, it's a minus. I mean, you know, it, uh, it actually hurts a lot. So, strategy number three, uh, and that's something that probably MRC has done. We have related our position sizing to the trading results. And that is always, always, always a bad idea. So, <clears throat> and that's what I did here. My strategy here was to add 2% every time I had a, a winner and then cut in half my risk every time I had a loser. So I had started from 1%, the 3,000, 3,500. Then I brought my uh, risk to 3%. So now I was risking uh, 3,100 here and I, I got one unit of um, risking gain here. So I made this. And then I keep increasing here and then I hit uh, minus 0.2 and I lose one or six here and then and so on, right? So I'm linking the position sizing strategy to the results in the trading system. Always, always, always a bad idea because the position sizing is totally independent from the trading system. And you, in fact, overimpose it on the trading system. And there is no linkage, there is no relation between the probability of your current or next setup hitting a profit level 
and the position sizing. So it's always, always, always a bad idea. What this shows, though, is that, again, your strategy that you use for your money management impacts your training objectives, impacts what whether you reach them or not. It does not impact only trading performance, mind. It impacts trading objectives as well. So that's that's the main point I want you to bring home today, okay? That position sizing or money management impacts my trading objectives. So impacts, in a way, also my psychology. Very, very important, okay? That's the... The point I want you to bring home today. I hope this is interesting. Give me a no if this is totally boring. If you find it interesting, give me a yes. Okay. And uh, I hope to see a few yes here. Okay, nice. So what do we want as retail traders then? To make money on a relatively small initial amounts because, you know, let's face it. We don't have 100,000 to put uh, into the trading game. And uh, to be honest, I would not put that into the trading game as I start or, you know, even after a little bit of experience because, you know, you have to prove yourself that you are actually consistent. So we don't, we want them to grow the initial account relatively quickly. And of course, at some point, we want to start earning a sizable monthly or yearly return to reach our other objectives or missions in life. Very, very important. The mission is life is going to uh, define the energy, the motivation, the kind of work you put into trading in order to become successful. So how do we achieve this object as well? We achieve these objectives with Pac-Man here again. That feeds, as I already mentioned, our Pac-Man feeds on what? Feeds on these two components here, the trading system and the money management. Today, we are focusing on the money management. Obviously, the trading system is also very, very important. So the trading system has to be in place. The money management, is obvious, of course, is paramount. And only after that, you can start worrying of your psychology of trading that allows you to trade so if you want to double double your, your account, what do you do? Well, let's consider a 0.42 expectancy. Uh, so you risk 1%, you make 0.42 in average for every trade, and the account includes also the losing trades. And you see that you need 166 um, trades here to uh, bring the new capital to 2,000, to, to 200,000 here, okay? So... And we are trading conservatively here. So how much time do you need for that? Well, consider that you only trade 40 weeks in a, in a year to account for holidays and low periods and so on. You need to do 0.83 trades or about four to five trades every week. And so you must trade actively, but you probably can use the larger time frames daily and four hours for the setups. Uh, and so you can reach this objective trading part time, uh, need to generate between 16 and 20 trades a month, which means that between you have to follow between three to six pairs on the daily and uh, four hour time frames. And you need to monitor between, sorry, uh, three to six trades on each pair and you need to monitor three to seven forex pairs. So that, that's uh, what you need to do here. If you want to uh, double your account, now, if you want to triple, uh, I'm assuming here a 0.71 expectancy system. And I also I'm assuming here money market layers. If you don't understand the money market layers, what I suggest is that you review the, those two presentations that I showed you at the beginning of um, uh, the this, um, this webinar, those two webinars that I offered on FS Street. But basically, we are, we are actually risking now 2% on the gains. And to, of course, we make 0.71 error uh, for each in average because this is our expectancy, right? So our table looks like uh, this. It's a bit more complicated. We reached our 200,000. It's Mark uh, in, 70, in 78 trades and need 115 trades to reach the result. So <clears throat> with a moderate money match, because now we're using money, money markets later. What if we want to um, bring our account size to 10 times the initial size? Okay, now we have to play in a totally different league. We must double every three months. For example, we can bring 10,000 to 20,000 the first month and then keep doubling it like that. So what we need is an unleveraged 300 25% uh, return 
with a very robust trading system. Now, we need that now. And we can use money management, but, you know, the reason why uh, we want a robust trading system and uh, and also we want to trade on the small time frame is because uh, we now need uh, we want to keep a, a, a tight risk management so our our risk is small to one percent but we need to have much uh, m- many more opportunities and poss- possibly we have to have a higher um, expectancy as well so uh, we have to day trade we need a higher expectancy and our trading system has to improve so basically we have to you know remove the, the mistakes here, the losing trades, we have to try to reduce the number of uh, losses here. And we can increase the number of scratches, but the number of losses has to be reduced. And of course, we either get to uh, the trading uh, profit levels or we just scratch the trade. So we, we can eliminate that. So we, we need something more similar to really this. 40, 55% winning and, you know, 30% of scratch trades and a small 15% of losses. So this would uh, bring up the reliability to 55% and the expectancy now is 1.43, uh, 43, which is bigger than one. So we need a bigger than one um, account uh, size here. So what has changed? Lower number of losses, we scratch or bring to target, and uh, we have a higher number of winners as well. And the higher number of scratches is not really a problem because, you know, um, if you scratch, fine, you are paying, you are paying the cost of trading, but that does not affect expectancy a lot, right? So the expectancy goes down only uh, of a small amount. So with an expectancy of 1.53, you need around five to seven trades a week with 1% risk. If you risk a little bit more, 1.5%, you can, you could make it with one, with three to five trades a week, okay? And still retain the free risk trade concept which is what I showed you before. So how can we achieve it? The, the key is get involved in the right, right spots where low or highs are printed before a reversal and price dynamics simplifies getting a free trade. And a free trade is, is what um, is what allows us to, uh, to, get, um, uh, to get the scratches. So again, the way uh, that uh, can help you uh, reaching these objectives is by looking at where algorithms, at least for me, where algorithms get involved, because that helps you get those uh, fear risk trades um, very, very easily. So you can actually, uh, you know, uh, bring higher the number of scratches if that's the, the case, but also bring out bring higher the number of re- of um, of um, uh, winners here because now you get involved in uh, points of retraces where the algorithms can actually participate. So you either scratch or you you actually bring to uh, bring to target. So so the trading system alone might not justify the time. So you need a good trading system. And one uh, one thing that I uh, you know I practice and I suggest is to Actually, um, apply uh, the all the methods that um, that actually study the uh, presence and the effects of algorithms on price. And uh, to mention that, I want to uh, mention that um, there is uh, uh, one of the uh, one of the, um, the offers that I have is the uh, uh, Fibstalker Methods Coaching Program, which which is actually a program that uh, that actually studies exactly what algorithms are doing on the larger time frame and then uses a stalking timing which is a proprietary technique to um, to enter the market it's an eight module uh, course in seven months uh, with individual attention and uh, in the first part uh, you study we study price structure in modern markets uh, and effective trade setups and how uh, those setups are related to market psychology. I then introduce my proprietary FIPS talking timing technique that allows to study the counter trend sequences and enter only after confirmation with low risk and uh, and actually with a high probability of getting those um, uh, trades, uh, those um, fear trades. 
And then we look at advanced techniques. In the second part, we look at the overall rules of the methods. And uh, I also introduce a full process to analyze price structure in all time frames and price discovery as well. And uh, I help you formalize the FIPS talking trading system that is your trading system, but with all the components that they give you that the mod model algorithms. And then I introduce the 15 task of mental model to become a successful, consistent trader. So. I um, I need to close here, and uh, I want to mention the fact that if you go there is actually uh, there is actually um, um, there is actually an offer that is being uh, is being uh, provided is being offered uh, on FX Street at the moment. So if you um, if you go to uh, if you go to uh, my uh, my page here, you find that you can click on that, and it's a unique offer because I'm offering also the intraday FIP stalker system here. So if you are interested, uh, you can get to uh, you can get to uh, uh, you know to the webinar here and the webinar page, and you'll find uh, you'll find the link here. And uh, someone is saying that uh, uh, the link might be broken or uh, there are problems. But as you can see, I mean, uh, if you click on this. This is the FX Suite subscribers exclusive offer, and I'm offering uh, uh, a lot of value here. And um, if you are interested, you get uh, four things that uh, only subscribers on FX Suite are going to receive: a discount, free bonuses, and there is also one, a uh, two one-to-one -one, um, reviews with me and a new intraday FIP stocks intraday uh, trading system that helps you uh, building a trading system that gets very, very close to that 1.53% uh, percent system that, uh, that I mentioned before. So uh, if you have any questions, I mean, um, um, uh, there is no time probably to complete the, uh, the, uh, the presentation here, but uh, I just want to touch on the con conclusions here. You want to risk a low percentage so fixed fraction with money uh, money management method and always plays in the play in defense, protect precious capital and try to remove stress from trading. And one way to do that is to uh, make your uh, trading system as um, rule based as possible. OK, and next, have your parachutes risk, accept risk, uh, put, uh, you know, uh, use only a low risk, use price confirmation before getting involved. Uh, and in modern markets, 80 percent of the volume is modeled by algorithms, is actually traded by algorithms. So you want to look at what algorithms are forcing on price, what they are doing on price, which kind of structure they're making on price. And of course, always, always apply risk free trades. Focus on generating low consistent monthly percentage gains and we saw that we can get more aggressive, but only if we have a high expectancy um, trading system. Use money management to increase or magnify profits. Uh, I mentioned before the money management layers, which one of these techniques. Um, and uh, of course, we also demonstrated that money management can be used to reach objectives as well. Uh, which is the main point that I want you to bring home today. Make use of OPM, other people's money, and um, which means that you can leverage your gains from the market, risking more on it. And proper money management in conjunction with a solid trading system helps uh, even small size traders, so uh, traders with a small account, to realize, to get their trading objectives in time. Always, always, always closely guarding risk. So I don't want to play with the risk in order to get uh, my high return. I, I will never risk 5%. I can risk 1% and then uh, you know, on uh, money market, uh, on, on money from the from the market, uh, I may risk a two percent, but you know uh, that's not part of my emotional vocabulary, and I cannot risk that. So, uh, I hope this was uh, this was interesting. If you have any questions here, I'm uh, willing to um, you know to answer the uh, the questions. And uh, uh, thank you, Pantel. I mean, it was, I hope it was a lot of fun and um, 
again um, uh, you know look at the uh, look at the offer here uh, from uh, fx street this is going to be there till may the 29 if you are interested and um, and actually if you uh, you know if you want to play uh, this game again if you didn't play um, provided you have not memorized uh, the sequence of the trades watch the um, watch this webinar again and um, and actually, um, and actually play the game. Uh, you know the uh, the um, the Excel will always be there. So go on FibstalkerTrading.com uh, or sorry FibStalker.com, and uh, you can actually you know you can actually play the game again. If there are any questions, I'll answer uh, any questions. Uh, otherwise, I'll, I'll close it here. I hope it was interesting. And uh, if you want to have a reference system to uh, be able to generate those, um, those uh, returns, consider the, um, consider the, um, the, um, uh, consider the, uh, you know, FIPS Talker Methods Coaching Program. There are, um, you know, it's a complete formula. Um, there is, um, there is material online and we will have nine webinars from uh, three, three to four hours. And, uh, okay. So I'll need to close it here. Thanks a lot for being here. I hope you had fun and I hope you learned the importance of money management, um, uh, and how it affects your objective. Have a great day. Bye-bye now.